Hi, and welcome to this Phil Quick video. Now, in this video, we're gonna go into the details showing you inside Phil Quick and how it's used on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, the first thing I wanna mention is Phil Quick was designed by home security companies and alarm dealers, well, simply for home security companies and alarm dealers. Now, what does PhilQuick do? Well, first of all, PhilQuick is a software CRM that will fully automate your home security alarm dealership. So I'm talking from sales reps in the field or perhaps you have sales leads, you can manage those. Then you can charge your customers, schedule your technicians, track inventory, and, and so much more. Now, you, wanna, you may wanna set up your customers on auto recurring billing and uh, also perhaps, uh, you know, route your accounts via in-house or maybe even sell off some accounts. Well, I'm going to show you all that in this overview of the software. Now, before I move forward, I want to mention that this video is going to be long so that you can see all the details inside. If you want to fast forward through the video, feel free to do so. But also, I want to mention that as we develop the software and the software grows, you're going to want to check back on our blog over at philquick.com and see later greater features that we've added or reach out to our sales team and you can get all that information from philquick.com. We will have our contact information at the top of the website. Okay, so let's get started. Now, the first feature I want to show you is this company news editor we have here at the top. Well, this company news is designed and created so that you can keep the reps at your company, whether it's the sales reps, the technicians, the office staff, in the know of what's going on at your company. Now, we did this with a simple to use clean editor where if you go under configuration and website and then dashboard news, you will see we built our own company news editor that you can modify, play around, put images, videos, link certain text to maybe perhaps an outside source video. You can do all that directly from this company news editor. And it's very important inside your business to utilize this on a weekly, monthly basis to always keep up to date and fresh what's going on at your company. Okay, next I want to show you the leads portion of the software. We've upgraded and introduced an advanced way of managing your leads from within PhilQuick. As you know, leads are the bloodline of your company and it's very important to take a potential customer from a start, which is a new opportunity, all the way to converting them into a sale. So let's start off by looking over here at the leads tab on the left and then explaining what the import feature is. Well, you'll be able to upload leads from lead sources that you have in CSV format and import your leads into PhilQuick. Now, when you do and you head over to Pipeline, you'll see that these leads that you imported will start off in your new opportunity stage. Now, do keep in mind each of these blue tabs at the top are lead stages. You can create as many lead stages as you like, rename and name whatever you wanna call these lead stages. You can see how many leads at your company are in what lead stage. And in each lead stage, you can see which sales rep have which leads in that lead stage and on top of it, how long it's been in that lead stage. Well, what does all that mean? Let me explain how you would use it on a day-to-day -day basis. So let's just say I imported a bunch of leads into my software because I purchased a new homeowner's list, for example, from someone who gave me the new homeowner list. Well, I would import that into the software and automatically all those leads will show up in this new opportunity. Now, when I assign leads to sales reps, automatically they will get notified that they have brand new leads and they can see it from their dashboard when they log in. And I can even take a look at, let's just say a specific salesperson, which leads these this salesperson has and in what stage this salesperson has these leads. So this salesperson, sample seller number one, has one lead in new opportunity. Now, the second the salesperson picks up the phone, dials, and starts to make contact with this lead, well, they're gonna wanna drag and drop and move this lead into this new stage, which means they have started 
to make contact with this potential customer. Now, they didn't engage yet. The customer didn't pick up the phone or they didn't, you know, go to the property. They just started to acknowledge that, hey, I noticed I have a lead and I started engaging, trying to reach out to this potential customer. Now, once this potential, this lead, the salesperson reaches out to this lead and makes contact, they can drag and drop and move this lead now to, through the pipeline to the engaged because they engage. Now, again, do keep in mind, this is just something we created for the demo server and it's a sales tool that's really important to have your sales reps understand that the goal is to take a lead from a new opportunity and move them as far right as possible as you can get because once you, you complete the life cycle of a lead that's no, what normally what's next is for your potential customer to either be a buyer and turn into a sale or to disqualify the lead and move forward so as you can see this is very very robust and a way you can utilize this tool inside of Philquick to help drum up new sales and manage your sales reps and seeing what basically they're doing with the leads that you're spending money on to make sure that they're doing what they need to do at your company. Now, perhaps you want to take a look at more details on this lead. You can click on the customer itself, the name, and you'll be able to see on this lead exactly all the information that you need to see of what the sales rep is entering. Like perhaps you want to write a note or the sales rep did like um, this lead was interested in a camera system. Okay, we can write that and add that note. And now that we added that note, this is directly here on the lead. And by the way, our notes, date, time, and stamp, who does that note? who entered this note. And also, if you're logged in as someone with multiple privileges, such as, you know, an office staff, you'll be able to choose who sees this note. Like, maybe perhaps I, I, I want the sales rep to see this note, uh, but I don't want him to see, you know, another note, such as, if this turns into a sale, deduct $100. Let's do that. Okay, so in this case, we're gonna unselect. Well, by default, we set this up so that it's not selected. You can customize the defaults, whether you always want this check marked or not, based on different statuses that this customer's in, such as maybe it's a service, it's a customer, it's a lead. You can do that directly from your configuration. So let's add that note. And now when the sales rep logs in, the salesperson's going to see this note, but won't see this note because as you see, he doesn't have access to seeing that one, but does for this. And by the way, if you are integrated with one of our integrated partners, you will see those fields that are relevant to you. For example, we're integrated with ADT. So what you'll see over here are ADT functionalities. And it always is different based on which integrated partner your software is integrated with. So another thing we have is file attachments. So here on the file attachments tab, what this is, is basically on your customer, you'll be able to upload any file attachments you choose, such as PDFs or images. Now, when you do this, you'll, you'll see that instantly if I drag and drop and throw it on the screen, we now have that image and we have that PDF. A couple things you could do is one, clicking on the name and renaming it. Maybe this is the contract you uploaded and uh, perhaps this is a permit that you have on the customer. So that if the customer ever calls in, you can instantly go to the file attachments tab and take a look at all the file attachments you have for this given customer. And you can even modify the order, like maybe perhaps I wanna move the contract first and have the permit after directly over here. We also have an action log tab at the top. Now, what Philquick is doing in the background is it's tracking what's happening with this lead. Who is modifying what, updating what, and when. And we'll get into that further in this Philquick overview, but for now, just understand that you have this on every single customer. I wanna show you the leads list. When we click on it, what we will see is a list of all the leads directly over here. And if you want to get into a specific lead, you will just click on the lead itself and you'll be able to see everything that is on this actual lead itself. But perhaps you want to enter and create a brand new lead manually because somebody called into your office and then assign it to a sales rep. Let me show you how to do that. Over here on the left-hand side, you click on leads, new, 
and it instantly opens up this new lead that you can enter in this form. So let's start off with the lead source. Maybe perhaps this is a referral and you want to enter the name as Peter and the last name Pan and the customer over the phone gives you their phone number and they don't give you their address at this time, but they tell you they're in the city of Surprise and the state is Arizona. And on top of that, what they say is, uh, you know, my zip code is 85388 and I'm not gonna give you any other information. So let's click on create the lead. As we created this lead, you can see that the new opportunity stage this customer, well, first of all, it's just a lead at this point, is in. So this is a new opportunity for us to potentially make that reach out to this customer and make a sale. But here at the bottom, we have a notes field. Maybe this customer says, you know, my wife is uh, looking for a camera system. Uh, customer's wife is looking for a camera system. We can enter that directly here into the software, add that note. And as we further speak with this potential customer, they say, can you have you know a sales rep stop by my property tomorrow at 3 p.m.? Well, here you can click on seller and maybe you wanna assign it to this salesperson and there's an action required. So what's the action? In this case, they said, can a salesperson visit me? Well, at what time? And they said tomorrow, so let's select tomorrow. It's gonna to be three o'clock PM and hit the save button. Instantly, once we hit that save button, what just happened is the sales rep got notified that they have a brand new lead for tomorrow to go over to, and it was placed directly on their dashboard. With the push of one button, you can add this lead to your Google Calendar, and uh, as well, the sales rep can do that too. So that's just a general overview of the leads, the lead pipeline, importing leads, and we also have fill quick tutorial videos inside the software at any point if you're confused on how to use these tools that we have made available to you. And that's what this resources tab on the left hand side is. If you go to resources and click on video, and on this page, what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to embed YouTube videos directly into your PhilQuick site. Now, you will also be able to create categories and assign them to specific user roles. So let me explain. Here we have this new category button. If we click on it, it's going to say, what do you want to call the name of this category? And let's just say we called it Sales Training University. And I only wanted the sales reps to see this at my company. If you wanted perhaps secretaries and technicians to see this as well, you can select these boxes. But for this example, let's take those off and only make this category available to sales reps to see when they log in. So we create the category. And now that this category is created, as you see, we have it here at the bottom, Sales Training University, and we need to add some videos. So we have this plus icon. If you click it, it's going to say, what is the YouTube URL uh, link to this video? So I just went to YouTube and I grabbed a sales training that we created, let's just say in the past, and I'm going to paste it in here, that URL and I'm gonna click on get video details. Instantly, it says the duration of the video, the name, and the video ID. So maybe you wanna change the name, you can edit it, modify it there, but let's add the video directly into our PhilQuick site. Once we do, as you see, it's directly over here on the page. So now when a sales rep logs in, they'll see this under their resources videos tab. They'll only have access to seeing this individual category because they have access to this. Now, if I wanted to take this and move it along, if I had other videos, I can do that as well. Like I'll show you up here. I'll take this, move it over here. Maybe I want to rename this to just turf management. I can do that directly from clicking on uh, this pencil icon over here. Now, another thing you're gonna notice inside is we have a Phil Quick's tutor Phil Quick Tutorials tab. Here is where any videos that are, first of all, relevant to your company, meaning maybe you're integrated with ADT. Well, you'll see those 
individual videos that are made available to you. And also the specific user who's logged in will only see the videos that are made available to them. So office admins will see office admin videos, sales reps would be seeing sales rep videos on how to use their Philquick uh, site and technicians and so on and so forth. So we're constantly updating and adding this Phil Quick tutorial videos. So listening from feedback from you guys and gals who have been telling us, hey, can you please make this video? It's always going to be made available to you and inside the Phil Quick site for your ease and convenience. Next, we also have this images tab under resources. What this is for is any marketing material perhaps that you would want to upload to your site. So again, let's create a brand new category and let's call this marketing material. And let's only make this available to the sales reps in this example. And now that we have this category, we're going to click on the plus icon to add some files. And what I'm going to do is upload these files directly to the site. I just drag and drop it. And now we have this marketing material that's loaded up inside of Philquick. You will also be able to edit the name. Maybe you want to just type this in, uh, click on the pencil icon and call it that. And also if you click on the image itself, and again, this is mobile responsive, so you can do it from any iPhone, Android, tablet, and you wanted to get through your marketing material, you could just hit this next button directly over here or scroll, of course, and you'll get through your marketing material directly from inside your Philquick site. So if your sales team is in the field with a customer and they need to dig through, they can do that directly on their device. And lastly, in this resources tab, we have a documents field. Now in this documents is, mainly for, let's just say, technicians. You want to upload those manuals for panels on how to install or cheat sheets. Or maybe for sales reps, you want to upload, you know, their pay scales, uh, the breakdowns of it so they can always access and see it. Let's just create a brand new category. And in this example, we're going to call it technician manuals. And let's only give access to the technicians. Click on create the category. And now we have this category. Let's click on the plus icon. And I'm going to just drag and drop two PDFs into Philquick so it automatically uploads it so that the technicians can have access to these manuals. Voila, we're done. Now they have access to these two PDFs. And of course, as we know, we can rename it. And always you can rename the categories on any of these, whether it's the videos, the images, or documents with this pencil icon at the top over here and give certain other user roles access to it as well to update the categories. And of course, you can delete it or move these around as you start to build and develop your Philquick site. And then also to take a look at the actual PDF, you would just click on it, whether you're in the field or you're back at the office, and it automatically loads up. And as you see, you instantly have access to that manual or whatever it is you actually uploaded directly to your Philquick site. Now, this actions logging feature is, is quite a unique one. You see, as you start to use your software and all your other users, such as sales reps, technicians, secretaries, financial admins, and when they start using the software, Philquick on the back end is actually tracking the changes that are made to customer accounts. So to start, let me explain, you know, why you would even use this. If perhaps you want to go and take a look at who did what on a specific account, you can actually see that. Now, the four different places that we have this action logs is number one, on an actual customer, two, on an actual lead, three, on services, and four, globally. So which means on all your account basis. And I'm going to show you how you can search for each of these and, and actually see what's going on. Okay, to start, let me also explain that the person who's going to be able to see these action logs is that of which who has the user privilege of a financial administrator. Now, the first one I want to show you is how you see the action logs on a lead. So if you head over to leads and go to the list of 
leads, for example. Here you'll see the list of leads at our company. Well, if I were to click in on this customer Moon Chadwell, you'll see that we have an actions log tab at the top of this page over here. Now, if I were to click on this, this is going to show me the action logs that are happening on this specific lead. Okay, so here as we see, uh, this user, sample seller number one, and the date and time this person did this, they changed the entity. It says change the pipeline stage. Okay, so they changed the stage of the pipeline. Well, here you'll actually see the pipeline stage was the field that was was modified and the old value was lead in, which is what we actually have as one of our pipeline stages. And the new value, meaning what they changed it to was meeting arranged. Lead in and meeting arranged is basically what we have if I go back over here. You see, as our personal that we built out in this demo server, the stages in this lead pipeline. So if you had whatever name name you called your pipeline and you were to go to the action logs and a salesperson moved that lead along the pipeline, you would see the person's date and time they actually did this action and uh, what it was on. So if we scroll through, you'll even see they updated the lead information. So this secretary at this date and time updated the lead information. That's the action she did. And as you see, it says the old value, meaning we didn't have any of this. And uh, here was the new value. So the, she added this information to the actual account. These are all the actions that happened on this lead. So let's go over to go to the customer and go to an account list, for example, and let's just pull up any customer. And I'm going to show you the action logs on this customer. So now that we're entering into this customer and I were to look at the top here where it says action logs, let's click on it. Now I actually see on this specific customer, all the actions that were being tracked, okay, on this customer. So this is basically, as you see, uh, updated the setup fees and monitoring this sample secretary, that's the username in our demo server at this date and time. What happened? She changed the field from monitoring stat of monitoring status from not submitted to online and in service. And then over here, as we see the technician finalized the install. So as you see, when you're on the customer's account page, and you go to the action logs, you actually see more things, more changes that were made to this customer. Now, one thing I want to get you familiar with is if on this customer, okay, you go to the actions log, you will see you can filter by a specific user, for example. Like maybe I want to see what did the technician do on this customer? Hit the search and it'll pull only all the logs that the technician did on this customer. And as you see, the customer switched from two way voice yes to two way voice no. He also entered the installation confirmation number. You could see the old values, what was done before the technician actually went and finalized his work order. And then after he finalized his work order, all the values that were changed to these of which he inputted this data into Philquick. Okay, so that's the user. You can go and select by individual user. Let's click on this so we see all users. Also, perhaps you want a specific, maybe perhaps, you know, you want to see who switched on this customer's account. Um, perhaps, uh, you know, somebody updated the email and you wanted to search that. Now, if anybody updated the email address like we have over here, this secretary on this date and this time updated, as you can see, the email, the old value, we didn't have any, the new value, this is what it was. So you're able to filter by the actual field itself. Lastly, I want to explain the description. So let's just go over here and let's select back to the all so we can see everything. The description is going to is going to filter by the descriptors such as these updated setup fees and monitoring, finalized install, as you can see if we scroll through, accepted and completed customer. So maybe I want to see, you know, um, just the completed customer. I'll type in completed customer and let's hit the search. As you will see, it'll show you the action log, accepted and completed the customer. So do play around with your, your fill quick action logs on the customer and read through these actual descriptors. Updated setup fees and monitoring. Maybe you wanna see what happened to the setup fees and monitoring. So I would just type in, for example, setup fees and then hit the enter and it would instantly filter by that. 
Okay, so that's a good example. If I delete that and hit the search, it'll reshow me all the actual action logs on this customer. Okay, so now I wanna show you the services on customers, the action logs for services on customers. So let's just perhaps say, you know, a customer's calling in and his name is Mark. I go over here and type in Mark. Instantly it scans our database and we have Mark Farmer and we have Mark Berry. Well, let me go into the customer Mark Farmer and then go over to the services tab over here. Okay, well now I see there was a previous service history on this customer. If I go into the details on this customer, we now are on this service ticket, okay, that the technician did on this customer. We have an actions log up here at the top on this service ticket. So if I clicked on it, it would now show me all the action logs on this specific service. So do note, these service ticket action logs are completely separate from the actual account logs because a lot of times you want to see just some of the action logs or the action logs that happened on this service itself. You can go through here and see that it was finalized by this technician, the date and time. This was the old values and he switched it to these. And do keep in mind, okay, you still have these exact same filters. So you're able to filter by maybe you only want to see what the secretary or the technician, for example, search did on this service. And you'll be able to filter by that. And the same thing as the fields like I discussed earlier on in this video. Lastly, I want to show you the global actions log. Here, if we click on action log on the side, this is going to open up to where you can actually scan company-wide, globally, your accounts on what happened basically on which customer. So let me explain. First of all, maybe you want to see a specific user. Like what did this salesperson do? All the actions this salesperson did and I hit the search button. It's going to show me in chronological order. It's going to show me exactly what this salesperson did. And you can go through the logs like this. Maybe perhaps you only want to see what that person did within the last week from the 30th and uh, maybe perhaps at a set time, like three o'clock PM, and search all the way to today at this time. Okay, well, it's gonna pull up exactly the action logs that this person did. As you see, this sales rep changed the pipeline status, well, from what lead in to contact made on this customer. And yes, you can even open up this actual lead. It'll open up in a new tab, this lead action, and uh, I'll be able to get over directly to that lead over here. Okay, so that's one way you can use this global search. Now, another way, let's just go back and refresh this and let's even delete the date just to show you more. You can filter by the actual entity type. Maybe you wanna see, you know, all the services directly and as well that were modified by this technician. So this technician and the ent entity type is service. So let's hit the search. Now it's gonna show all the action logs that this technician did on service tickets directly over here. Also, the description, you can filter even more. Remember, we talked about the descriptors like finalized services, added a service note. Like maybe I just wanted to see note. So I'll type in note over here and hit the actual search. And it'll show all the notes that the technician actually updated. And of course, like I said, you can right click, go open in a new tab, or just click on that actual link. And it'll instantly take you over to where you can see what that technician actually did. Okay, so next I wanna go back to the dashboard over here and I want to explain what you're seeing on this dashboard. Well, first of all, Phil Quick, like none other, really streamlines the customer's life cycle for home security companies and alarm dealers like nobody else does it in a simple to use clean platform. Well, what you're taking a look at here is a blue tag, a red tag, a purple, and a green tag. What this blue tag is to start is any sales personnel at your company that submitting sales over to your office staff, it's going to be sitting in a queue here because as we know, we explained in the earlier on in the video that you can go in and create these leads for your sales reps or your sales reps can create leads themselves. And then once they're ready to convert this sales lead into a customer, they're going to submit the account over to your office staff. Now you have one of two ways of 
doing this. You can have your sales reps have their own little platform where they can, you create them as a user inside of PhilQuick and they can submit accounts over to you, or you can do it the good old fashioned way to where your sales reps call in to your office staff and your office staff performs all the necessary deeds that need to be done on a customer from start to finish. But we do give you that flexibility to streamline that that customer life cycle in case you want to hire a bunch of sales reps, have them scattered all over the place, and constantly be submitting accounts over to you. And let me show you that. So in this case, on our dashboard, this is showing that there's two accounts awaiting acceptance. If we click on it, it's going to show that these two sales personnel, well, in this case, these sales reps are splitting the commissions. So they're splitting the sale. And uh, it's going to show that Joseph Massey, the customer, it's been 18 hours since the sales rep submitted this. What does this mean? Well, of course, this is a demo server. If it was a couple minutes or a minute or 30 seconds that the sales rep just submitted this account over to you, your office staff will get notified saying, hey, Paul in the field just got a job and uh, he wants you to schedule it with the technician. And you can click on view to actually just view this account and see basically what the sales rep is submitting over to us. And as you see over here, all the information is pre-filled on this customer from what the sales rep is saying needs to get installed on this customer. So I could take a look at this and see how far the sales reps got and it's pending. So if I wanted to scroll to the bottom and maybe perhaps uh, we ran the credit and it was declined. So we don't want to process this and schedule it with a technician. I can click on this decline button, but maybe perhaps this is a good account and you want to accept and complete it and move further into schedule scheduling your technician. Well, let's click accept and complete. And instantly it brings us over to an editable version of what the sales rep submitted. So if you wanted to perhaps sell this account off, you can select this radio button of sold. Maybe perhaps you want to in-house this account. And what in-house means is you're going to charge the customer, set them up on auto recurring billing as of opposed to selling this account off to a funding source. So you can, you can route the account according to the radio button that you select over here. And if you're Central Station gives you a block of account numbers and you're not with one of our integrated partners, you can bulk your account numbers from within PhilQuick so that you just click on this get button and instantly it will take the next account number and receiver number in your account block and fill it on this page for you. So you don't have to have a spreadsheet to monitor which account was the next account and receiver number in line. Now, as we see over here, the sales rep, depending on the user role and privilege you give them, may or may not have the ability to schedule and prep a technician. In this case, as we see, the sales rep is saying on the 7th of January, he wants a technician between eight and 10 o'clock for this job. So if I click on this open scheduler button, it's instantly gonna take me to the 7th because that's when the technician is saying he wants, because that's when the sales rep is saying he wants it to be installed. All I'm going to do is since it's eight to 10, I'm gonna assign it with this technician because let's just say we promised this technician to fill him up first. It's gonna say, hey, we're about to schedule this with the technician between this date and this time. Is that what you wanna do? Yes, we click on the okay button. And as you see, it automatically fills it over here on this page. And we have this check mark that's automatically check marked that we're gonna notify the technician that he's got a brand new install on the 7th as we save this page. So here, as we scroll through the page, you can select your multiple monitoring companies with multiple monitoring packages and plans and contract terms, which are all configurable from your configurations tab. Now, we also have a special pro rated amount calculator and the majority of people, what they do is they prorate their customers. And, and how do we prorate customers in the alarm business typically? Well, if the account is getting installed on the 7th, which is tomorrow, and the customer is going to start the monitoring tomorrow, well, typically we're gonna prorate the customer's first bill from the 7th all the way to the end of the month. That's one way of doing it. Some people do it from the 7th 
to the first time the customer is going to be billed, which is going to be maybe they say, I want to get billed on the 15th of every month. So some people prorate from the 7th to the 15th. Either way, when we scroll down to where it says prorated amount, we click on this calculator icon. By default, it does from the installation date to the end of the month, and it does all the calculations for you. This here in Philquick is saying there's 25 days left at this amount for the monitoring plan that you selected per day. So the total for the pro rate is $34.67. But in the instant you wanted to do, remember, on the 15th of the following month, we would just select the start date is going to be the 15th of the month. And that's saying the pro rate's going to be $40, 40 days over here. And the total is now going to be $55.47. So we select this to use it. And maybe on top of it, you want to also charge one month up front. Or maybe you want to do 12 months up front. As you see, Philquick will automatically calculate the total amount up front by just selecting it directly over here. Okay, now another thing we have is this get tax button. This customer in any given city has a specific tax code where you got to collect the taxes on it. Well, check this out. Push this get tax button and instantly for this customer in that given city, uh, it's going to automatically calculate the tax amount by just pushing that button. And yes, it's updated in real time. Now, we're talking about recurring billing here because we're going to set the customer up to get automatically charged in this case. We're not selling this customer off. All we're going to do is we're going to select the 15th of the following month is when the auto recurring is going to start and we want the customer to get charged on the 15th of every month and of course you could change the billing cycle to semi-annually, annually as you can see directly over here, quarterly. We want no end date in sight. We put this customer's credit card information over here and we have all the emergency contacts and all that directly on this account. So scrolling through this page, we now see everything is filled out and completed. And I'm also going to show you here that with products, if you ever have, let's just say, kits that you build out inside of your company, you can build out numerous kits and you can build out certain products in those kits and you select that kit, it would automatically fill out what's in that kit for faster data entry. And one more thing I wanted to point it out before moving forward is this page can be set up to have automatically it filled out based on defaults that you set up inside your configuration tab. Like maybe you always are going to, or for the mass majority of times, you're going to use specific equipment. You can have it every time a sales rep or your office staff clicks on this page that to create a brand new customer that it's automatically filled out. Like maybe you're always going to be in a specific uh, city or state. You can have that or a specific central station or alarm.com. You can have these fields automatically filled out. So when you come to this page to fill it out with a brand new customer, there's less data entry that's actually needed. And one more thing I wanted to show you is we have this ad miscellaneous charge. Now, sometimes maybe perhaps you want to charge $45 for a permit fee. And you also want to add maybe a long trip charge of $50 because the customer lives uh, far out, long trip charge. And each of these charges you'll see to the right, is it taxable or is it not? If you select it, as you see, this updates in real time. Okay, so I wanted to actually scroll through and once we hit this save button, instantly, as we see, this is an in-house count. It was automatically tagged as such. And now that technician just got notified. He has a brand new job and it's placed comfortably on the technician's dashboard for him to get to the job site. And by the way, as I show you more of a technician login, you're going to see that the technician can push one button to instantly get over to that customer's property, whether they're in the field or they're at maybe perhaps Walmart before they're headed over to that next job. They can push one button and get over there automatically from their smartphone, from their tablet, anywhere that they have data. And we also have this add tag field to feature where you can actually click on it and input into your FillQuick site as many custom tags as you please. And we just created these for the demo server with these colors. Like maybe this customer is a family friend. If I click on family friend and click on add tag, now we have this customer tagged as a family friend so that I can build out reports or search 
for only specific customers that are family friends. Or maybe perhaps I wanted to add another tag to this, like family friend, but also, you know, I need to get new paperwork. If I built out a report and saved it, or I built out a search field based on uh, family friends that also need to get new paperwork, it'll instantly pull this account. So custom tags, you can do unlimited of them, and you they're identifiers to pulling up your accounts based on any criteria that you want. You just tag it and you simply find how which accounts you want to pull up. Now, again, we're also integrated with alarm.com. So if you were to click on alarm.com, you can have either your technician or your office staff put this account online with alarm.com, register the radio, unregister the radio, and you can even integrate with multiple alarm.com accounts at once. So if you had multiple alarm.com accounts, you would see them in the list over here. And you just select whichever panel type, for example, enter the modem serial number, and as you scroll down here and select a package, like maybe we're doing interactive plus automation, it's going to show you which free app Add-ons, which other add-ons you have, and maybe you want to do locks, thermostats, lights on this account, and your technician from the field can do it, or like I said, your office staff can do it as well. Once you're done, you hit submit to alarm.com, and this would actually put it online with alarm.com, saving you a ton of time having to log out and double enter into alarm.com. Okay, so next, let's go back to the dashboard, and I wanna explain this new red tag. Well, remember this was two accounts awaiting acceptance. Well, once we scheduled that the technician to go to this job, there's outstanding money to be collected on that customer. And you also have six accounts that you're supposed to collect money from. Well, PhilQuick puts and organizes in this red tag, this bucket, all the money that's supposed to be collected at your company. Yes, if you sell off accounts and you in-house accounts, it's gonna show you which accounts are sold off that you're supposed to collect money on and which accounts of in-house that you're supposed to maybe collect equipment charges, install upgrades, all that is going to be synced and streamlined in real time so that maybe your your technicians in the field right now one of your technicians and he's upselling a smoke detector well he'll be able to instantly put that when he's finalizing his work order and it's going to group it in this bucket here for the money that's waiting to be collected because keep in mind if money's lost at your company because you forgot to charge the customer for that well it can actually make the trickle effect happen when you're getting to payroll it can actually affect you paying the technician a set amount. Maybe perhaps you pay the technician for that upgrade, but you forgot to charge a customer. With PhilQuick, that is done away finally. We've reinvented the wheel so that you can actually have all the charges here. It'll automatically show it. And when you get to generating invoices and all that, if the customer's account has pending charges, it'll show you that. Are you sure you want to pay the sales rep or this technician on this upgrade because you haven't already collected this amount at your company? But let me show you how to actually charge these customers and set them up on, for example, auto recurring billing. Well, remember this customer for Joseph Massey, if I click on it, it takes us into the payments page where we're going to be charging this customer. And I want to explain to you this page. So we're on this customer at the top, Joseph Massey, the payment info tab. Here, you'll always be able to access on any customer your payment info tab and do anything related to payments on this customer. Like maybe the customer calls in and says, hey, I want to give you a bank, uh, to uh, my bank information so you can e-check charge me. So you click on this add payment and add a bank account. Here, let's just say it's the Bank of America and they give you their routing number and account number and the account type is a checking account. And of course, if the billing name is different, boxes appear, billing address is different, this appears. But let's just add this to the account and now we have this extra form of payment as an option to charge the customer. And I wanna show you that so you can keep these and maintain these on your account. Now, maybe perhaps we wanna charge the setup fees and 
the original charges that we're supposed to charge this customer on their MasterCard, we just, if you wanted to see the breakdown of the fees, you can see that directly here. And if you wanted to see the actual charges for this equipment, remember, you always have access to going back to the general info page directly over here. But we want to charge this customer. So we're going to click on this tag that says the customer's not charged. And we want to apply a credit. We want to actually charge this customer. Uh, let's just say the full amount. And if you wanted to only apply $300, you can enter $300 and it would still keep in the red bucket on your dashboard that this customer has not been collected all the money yet. So it'll always be there until the balance is zero. In this case, let's even have an email go out to the customer like, thank you for your business with a receipt, add the payment, and now, as we see, charged, automatically switch this tag as completely charged, and we have not set the auto recurring billing up yet. So let's click on this recurring billing setup, and as you see, PhilQuick automatically knows the amount we're supposed to charge, the date it's supposed to start. It's just asking you, which form of payment does a customer wanna pay for the auto recurring billing? Maybe perhaps they wanted to do the Bank of America for the billing and uh, the uh, upfront months on the MasterCard. You can do do that as such by selecting this one. Well, for this example, let's choose the MasterCard on file because maybe they want to also pay the auto recurring billing on the MasterCard. Click on create the subscription. And now we have charged the customer and the recurring billing is set on the 15th to charge. And every time your customer gets charged, it'll automatically group it over here. And you will see on the right hand side, the total amount that we collected from our existing in-house customer. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to show you that on a customer we have set up in the demo server. So if we go to Luis Rivera directly over here and we enter his account, we go to the payment info tab, you will see directly on this page, first of all, the total amount that we charge this customer for upfront, and then also the total amount over here on the right-hand side that we've collected so far on this in-house for auto recurring. And by the way, if a transaction ever fails, you'll see it directly over here, and uh, it'll place it in red automatically for you. So let's break down here as we see the visa is what we were charging, but here it failed, and what happened? We we switched it to a MasterCard. And if we take a look at the notes, the customer called in and we got a new credit card info. And as you see, that was true because the credit card changed. And then over here, we had a red, but wait a second, the MasterCard was the exact same. And we look at the notes, oh, the customer had to put money on the account. And we actually collected that in a few days over here. And that's why we've been charging this customer. Now, if you're a financial administrator at the company, you'll have access to this financial administrative tab. So if we click on it, you'll be be able to see that you have a revenue and expenses tab directly over here. This revenue and expenses tab is actually going to show you all the monies that's being collected on the company, all your overhead on the company, and it's going to even tell you, let's just say uh, this account was in the negative where you're still not profitable, it'll actually have told you how many months it's going to take before you actually become profitable on this customer. So having said that, let's go back to the dashboard and show you some more stuff with this purple tag. So remember, let's go back and recap. We had an account that our sales rep submitted to us. We actually had two, but in this case, we approved and accepted one. It then moved that customer into the red bucket. Well, we charged that. It said six accounts to charge, and now it's only five. We scheduled the technician, and now there's eight jobs that are open and not finalized. So this is all the jobs that are related to your technicians that either they have not yet finalized or they're still open. And not yet finalized means you scheduled it and it's passed over here as we see in red. We have these jobs that the technician is one day late to be in finalizing his actual work order. And to finalize a work order, we've made it super simple for technicians to do so. And as such, which you'll see later on in the video as I kind of log in as a technician and show you around there, they literally push a couple buttons and instantly they'll have access to finalizing their work order. But here you want to get on top of your technicians and say, hey, uh, sample tech number two, you have a service job that you still didn't uh, you know, finalize. Please make 
make sure you actually finalize that work order because inventory automatically gets deducted from their truck once they're finalizing their actual work orders. So here your office staff will be able to see a good overview because they also see the jobs that are scheduled out. And as this today by midnight, uh, the technicians that don't finalize their work orders, it'll automatically be grouped into this category above and it's gonna show up as red because they haven't told you what they installed on that job. So let's jump back into the dashboard. And as I explained, you will have on your dashboard the ability to sell off accounts or in-house accounts. Well, if you're going to be selling accounts off, meaning you have a funding source that pays you upfront for an account, well, that's gonna be this green tab over here. When you click on it, it's going to show you the total revenue, holdback, and funded date as fields that you can enter to better track your profit and loss on those accounts as well. And over here, you'll actually see the customer with the credit and the packages that they so decided to pick so that if you get your funding source and you take a look and you're getting funded at something different outside of what you see here, you can quickly go into this customer's account and make any modifications that you so choose. Now, next, I want to go back to the dashboard over here and explain a little bit more about this dashboard. I want to explain that you have company performance. Like, maybe you want to see how many canceled accounts you had this month. And you can hover over these amounts, charge back, and you can even change based on specific ranges. Like, you can do a custom range or maybe last year, you just instantly select that. And as you see how fast that loads up, how many sold accounts did we actually have? And to the right you see company performance versus time. And if I hover over, we look in August, wow, we had a powerful month, what happened? Oh yeah, we got the sales team rallied up and uh, they were super excited. So we need to do more of what we did in the months as you take a look at the year and say, we need to do more of what was working in that month. And by the way, you can select certain metrics, take certain metrics off and hover over specific points so you can get more insight into your company on what's working and what's not. And yes, you can scroll down and see sales rep rankings, team rankings, and even we have a special fill quick to fill quick link. For those of you who are master dealers that have sub dealers underneath them, you can have your sub dealers have their own instance of fill quick and actually have the rankings report of which sub dealers are producing what numbers directly on your dashboard. Now, you also can have your sub dealers who have their own text, their own inventory, their own everything, have their own sub account and you'll be able to integrate the two so that you as the master dealer, if you search for a customer, will be able to find that one of your sub dealers in one of those cities or states actually own that account and click on to gain in access to that sub dealer's account as well. As you can see, FillQuick is a powerful tool for your home security company or dealer and continuing to grow with massive and more features every single week, month, and year, we constantly be adding and upgrading. Now, I also want to show you at the top over here, there's a calendar icon. If we click on this, this is instant access to taking a look at the technician's calendar. So if you ever wanted to get in or go ahead days, you can select it from the calendar. But if you wanted to get into a customer account, you would just click on the name and it would automatically open up in the background. <clears throat> Purple are your service tickets and blue are your installs. So if I wanted to get into this, I click on this and then I can close this and instantly it's directly back over here uh, to this customer's page. And yes, I could bring a printer friendly version if I wanted to do one of those. I can print out a work order, hand it over to a technician. If maybe you have that one tech who's a little old school. And by the way, these tags at the top, they as you see, you can click on them to make modifications to them as well. And if you are with one of our integrated partners, you can click on alarm events events and see the actual alarm events at the central station, what happened. So you're going to see so many different things you can do inside of the software itself. Okay, next I want to get into reporting. If we go to reports and we go to customers, you're going to be able to see over here on this page that you can build out any custom reports that you want and you can save them and filter them. So let me explain. This is extremely customizable. Maybe I want a creation date, a sold date, a lead source, and a sales rep, but also I want, and let me just scroll through and show you the power of how many different fields that you can select. What we're doing is we're building the headers of the report. And I wanna type profit 
I want to filter by a customer's profit and loss. Okay. For this example, these are the only headers I'm going to build. Let's click on display the results. Okay. We have the results for this report that we've built out. And as you see, I can click on the header to filter from highest to lowest profit, for example. And as you start to hover over these fields, you'll see we added an advanced little four bar, three bar icon here where you can click on it. And maybe you want to update in real time. Like I only want to see my door knocking ones, uh, lead sources and my flyers. Instantly, you can filter by doing that directly over here. And each of the fields have this, so you can do more of that. Now, perhaps you want to obviously drag this and move these over here. You can do that as well. And we're not happy with this report. We want to actually get into more customized reports. And I'm going to show you. So first of all, it's showing we have 1,204 customers that returned these results based on these criteria in our database. But I want to add some filters. Like maybe I want to do a sold date. And I want to filter by a, and as you can see, you have multiple filters, a specific sales rep. Okay, so I want to do a 2019 report for a specific salesperson. So I click on the year over here. Let's go to January the 1st of 2019. And we're going to click on the month at the top, go to the end of here and select the 31st. And we're going to go to only this sales rep in particular. Let's display the results. You see eight customers this sales rep sold in 2019 already. But do keep in mind, you can add any types of custom filters that you so choose. I just gave you this example. Like maybe you also want to select all the sales that were also installed. So not just your sold. And then maybe if you're selling accounts off, you want to also say only the ones that were funded as well. You can do all that. And if you clicked on display the results, it'll update the funded installed accounts that were two of these accounts were actually installed and funded. Now, maybe I love this report and I want to save it so I can always come back to this report. Check this out. At the top over here, you will have your saved queries to where if you have saved reports, you can actually see them. So as you see right now, we don't have any, but I want to save this report. So I save it and I want to call it Peter the Great. That's the sales rep's name, let's just say, 2019 funded accounts and hit the save button. So now that we have that, I also want to, let's just say, go to another sales rep and let's just say sample seller number two, I'm going to display the results. This guy so far doesn't have any sales, but I want to save that guy as, let's just say, instead of Peter the Great, Mark the Best is this rep's name and I hit save. Now I can filter between the two sales reps, as you see here, and instantly pull those reports so I don't have to rebuild these actual categories. And by the way, if I wanted to download the results to an actual spreadsheet and do any crazy customization calculations with any of the headers and fields, you can instantly push that button and it'll automatically download to your dashboard. So I'll click over here, for example, and go to Peter the Great, load them up. And as you see, we have two results that returned over here. I just simply click on the download results button and instantly it'll say, do you want to save this as an Excel spreadsheet? Yes, I do. Click OK. And automatically that begins to download. Now, do keep in mind that's just on the customers. You can go and build custom reports on your leads. And not only can you build custom reports on your leads, you can build custom reports on your service tickets, you can build them on the customer payments, and as well the contractor invoices that you pay to your actual reps. Now, do note that you can also go to your weekly tasks and do a bunch with funding. So first of all, we explained the first step in the process when we're doing funding and payroll, which I want to show you. You can fund your accounts, and then you can go and do technician payroll, which here on your technician payroll, it's going to show you all the invoices you didn't pay to your technicians yet, but also uh, maybe you want to filter all the jobs that my technicians installed from Monday up until Sunday or, uh, and, and you want to just hit a search button and it's going to say, okay, these are the eight jobs that these technicians were supposed to generate invoices for. Well, when you click on create the invoice, it pulls up a side by side calculator to where you can see everything that happened on this account. And remember earlier, 
earlier on, I told you if there was extra charges that were supposed to be collected uh, on this customer and it wasn't collected because the customer's credit card failed, you'll see it directly here. It'll have a red box and it'll say X that there's pending customer charges. So be careful. In this case, because it's $45 that we collected and yes, the customer actually, the technician went to the job site. I could see he fixed the issue. He added a smoke detector. He removed a door contact. And by the way, if your technicians remove inventory from the customer's property, it's going to put it back on his truck so you can track inventory that was removed as well. Now here, let's just say we're paying this technician $125 and this was for a wireless install you would put it directly over here. But in this case, this is not a wireless install. As you see, it's an actual service and he just did a service ticket. So typically for services, it's $35 and it was a service install fix. Maybe you want to call it. You can add as many fields as you like and maybe perhaps you want, because he was late to the job, you deduct $10 as a late fee. You can do that as well. It automatically tags the technician we create the invoice and now that invoice for $25 is unpaid and it's grouped in a bucket to actually pay this technician at the end of the week in our module that's directly on the funding and payroll, weekly tasks and pay invoices tab directly over here. Now, if you wanna see more about funding and payroll, please do schedule a demo. And the best way you're going to schedule a demo with us is going to philquick.com and we will always have a button on the website that says schedule a demo to where you can pick a time where we can go live and show you all the latest, greatest updated features and as well show you how to do more with your funding and payroll because that's gonna make this video way longer as well. So we wanna make sure that that we get to show you exactly tailored to your company how you do that. And I'll just give you a brief example of sales reps payroll. Uh, a lot of people like to pay after they get funded, before they get funded, or in different ways. Well, you can custom create your own plugins from within and custom create if, let's just say, on the point system you pay your sales reps. When you create this invoice, it automatically calculates how much this sales rep is supposed to get paid. And if they're splitting commissions and maybe perhaps a manager gets an override, it would automatically calculate it for you. And if anything ever changes, what the technician installs versus what was actually requested by the sales rep, you'll see it in yellow over here where you can hover over and see what the, the history was. So the sales rep said two, but the technician changed it to three. And if there was any notes that the technician put, and by the way, tagged automatically as notes on a lead or any notes that were here, it would show directly for you when you're calculating your commissions. Cause maybe you see something that you want to override and go, you know, you know what? Um, I promised, um, you know, a technician, that uh, if this scenario happened, I would actually give him $50 from the sales reps pay. Just a random example. Uh, to the tech for saving your account. And I actually create the invoice. So instantly, Phil Quick created the invoice for this tech sales rep, this sales rep, and as well that manager override as we see over here. People say, what if we have multiple levels of management? Like a uh, perhaps you have a regional manager that gets a $25 override on all these sales. Yes, you can do that. You click on the create invoice here. You would select a person's name and only the people who are abil have the ability to get that would be listed over here. And then on top of it, maybe he gets $25. You create that invoice for that person and instantly on this account as we know it's calculated in the profit and loss and it's put in that bucket for those people to get paid under funding and payroll weekly tasks and this pay invoices directly here so this is where it's going to group the actual invoices at the end of the week to where you can actually just select one button it'll say you're supposed to pay paul this amount peter this amount tom this amount and so on and so forth but I also want to show you contractor invoices and show you a list. If you go to the list of contractor invoices, you'll see everybody and everyone you're paying at the company and the invoice. So you can click on this to actually get in to that invoice and see what actually happened. But also perhaps you want to filter any filters as you see from the top over here, like an invoice number, a status, and so much more. Remember, PhilQuick is an enterprise level software for your home security company and alarm dealership that's made to really 
automate, but also give you the power and the flexibility to really run your security company and dealership the way it's supposed to, to help you scale your business. Lots of people say when they do payroll, they want to see it in a group format. Well, you'll be able to do that directly here. As you recall, we were doing and generating some, some invoices. And as you see, these are the ones that are unpaid. And then you also have every single week, let's just say, or every biweekly, you're doing your, your payroll. You'll see how much you paid that week to technicians and sales reps. And of course, you can filter up at the top by those specific individuals. And maybe you want to see a breakdown of this guy had 10 invoices and what did he get paid on? Well, let's click on the plus icon. You can see all the invoices inside directly over here. Now, I also want to show you the inventory management module. If we go to inventory and click on quantities on hand, you'll be able to see directly in all the inventory, of course, only if you're given the privilege as an inventory administrator that you have at your company. And it updates in real time. Like maybe you want to see only the door contacts. Maybe you want to see only your Honeywell equipment. Or maybe you want to see your two gig equipment. Instantly, when you click on that, you'll see that it filters in real time uh, the which equipment based on the filtered criteria that you're typing. Now, maybe I want to see a breakdown of who has what at my company of these 58 and the dollar value that's worth to my company. So if I click on this plus icon, I'll see this warehouse of mine, this warehouse of mine has this amount, this technician, this technician has these amounts. And um, if let's just say I wanted to see this technician, well, he has six. What else does he have in his truck? I can go over here and say, well, which holder? Do I want to see my warehouses or my technicians first of all? No, in this case, I want to see my technicians. Okay, which technician? And you can always type into the fields that have long list of different types of technicians, sales reps, or product, so that you can filter through really quick. And yes, on any Android, any iPhone, any tablet, it's still very mobile responsive. You just click on that and choose the quantities on hand. And now I see what this technician physically has on his truck. So you can instantly see that and the total dollar amount. So do keep in mind, depending on the roles that you give to the person who's an inventory admin, whether you want them to see the dollar value or not, that's up to you, but that's in the configurations. Now, also, maybe perhaps you want to add inventory directly to a technician's truck or to a warehouse because you order from ADI, Triad, Wave Electronics. Whatever you want, you can do that directly there. But I want to show you the transfer items. This is something that's super powerful that almost everyone who uses our software uses this feature. It's very clean because you can transfer from a warehouse to another warehouse, from a warehouse to a technician. Like, let's just say a technician comes into one of your warehouses and says, hey, Paul, I need to get um, two kits, two uh, Lynx 5000 kits with GSMs, and I need three smoke detectors. Well, let me show you this example. We're going from a warehouse, and it's going to be called our surprise warehouse, to, let's just say, a technician. Well, which technician? It's going to be sample tech number one. And what is he needing? Well, in this case, he's needing kits. So I type in kit, and it's going to show my Lynx Lynx 5000, just this is the one I want. He said he needs two of those. And then also, he needs smoke detectors. I type in smoke, and I'm going to select this one. And he said he needs two smoke detectors. Add that. So maybe I want to add a PO number, like PO12345. Now it's going to deduct from the warehouse this equipment. It's going to add to the technician this equipment because this technician came to pick up this actual inventory. So I'm going to transfer the items. And instantly it says the inventory items were transferred successfully. But Philquick also logged that. So if I go over to my logs over here, I'll be able to see if I selected, let's just say that technician, to see what happened. And I go to sample tech number one, I'll be able to see that we transferred items from this warehouse to this technician. This is the date, the time, and the user that did this with the PO number. Now, it's going to only show to keep it clean for you the inventory items that were affected during this process that we did on this date and time. As we see, it was zero that the technician had on his hand when we did this item, but he got two, that was what was changed, and now he has two of these actual items on his truck, and it does that for each of the individual items. And since we're on this logging feature, I'm going to show you really quick, as technicians are finalizing their work orders, doing service tickets, and all that, it's automatically tracked 
tracking and tracing and updating their inventory in real time for you. So that when you go at the end of the week, like this was an installation when he finalized his work order on this date and this time for this customer, it automatically deducted the inventory from his truck. If you want to at the end of the week or at the end of the month do inventory counts with your technicians, you would just head over to the set quantities over here and you would load up whichever technician or warehouse you're doing inventory counts on. Like let's just say I have Peter coming in which is named sample tech number one in our uh, demo server and I load his inventory up. Here's what he's supposed to have on his truck. Now I'm gonna go through each individual item with him and maybe perhaps as we get down to glass break sensors, he says, oh, I have four on my truck, not five. So you delete this, you put four. This is gonna update in real time and as you see, it calculates the difference. So this is minus one. As I scroll to the bottom and actually update the quantities, it's gonna update his quantities on hand. And to get into more detail as to how precise Philquick is with tracking your inventory, Schedule once again a live demo with us so we can explain in detail how we catch inventory loss at your company. So it's very important to understand that Philquick tracks and traces this to a T because the way we streamline and interact and engage different users and we want to show that to you. So just head over to philquick.com and as well just click on that schedule live demo button and you'll be able to click and see our calendar in real time what time is available to where one of our representatives will actually jump on a live call with you via the actual webinar and you'll be able to see Phil Quick in action as well. So if I click on the update quantities directly over here, now that updated the quantities on hand for this technician, and yes, if I went back to the logs, it will directly show that that was updated here. Now, also you may want to remove inventory that's gone bad from, let's just say, a technician on his truck, he had a smoke detector that was defaulted and you needed to send it back to the uh, ADI or try it or Wave Electronics. That's where this remove items would be. You can do that and maybe put an RMA number on there so it deducts it from either a warehouse or a technician, wherever the inventory is coming from. Now, another thing I wanted to show you is you can build and bulk sales teams and put sales reps under those sales teams. Again, schedule a demo with us to show you the details about this because there's a lot of little finite details that we can get into to where you can actually create, let's just say a brand new sales team. If I clicked on over here and maybe this is called the big boys team and I wanted to assign it to a specific sales manager, and I wanted to assign specific sales reps at this company, and uh, these three reps that do not ha aren't on a team, I create a team, assign those sales reps to them. Now it basically updated those sales reps on that sales team, and I can click on this checkbox to show it, and those sales reps will not be allowed to actually be put on a different sales team. So again, we're from the industry, we've grown, and we were a security company and an alarm dealership, just like you guys are, to where we built this custom from scratch in-house with our developers, so so that we can assist you guys in better helping your company grow with the tools that you need. So now let's just say for example, and I'll just go back to the dashboard, that a specific salesperson is on this sales team. And maybe perhaps this salesperson gets in a fight with his manager and you need to move him from this sales team to another sales team. You can simply do that from within the back end and make sure that it'll automatically have the old sales that were dedicated to this team, it'll automatically keep it with that old sales team and the new team you move them to, only the new accounts that he gets from there will be grouped and categorized under that new sales team. So under configurations, the last thing, I just wanna let you know all the integrations, all the different types of forms and inventory and, and uh, monitoring stations and plans, they're fully customizable from within. And by the way, the logo, although we do believe Phil Quick has a beautiful logo of itself, it's always replaced with yours from within the back end. You can upload your logo so that the branding looks more towards and tailored to your company. So I wanna first of all thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's quite long, but we wanted to give you a really good feel, a very good experience of how it is to use 
feel quick on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you believe that we are the software solution that either possibly is for you or is for you, you will see on the website, you'll be able to schedule a live demo with us or you'll be able to really give us a call from the phone number and ask any questions that you so choose to have so that we can better answer it to better get you an understanding of how powerful PhilQuick is designed to create and generate more RMR, more sales, more money at your company. Thank you very much.